Australians are living longer, but they're still retiring at an average age of 57. Now, this means Aussies need to fund their retirement for 30 years or more. Many retirees are being forced to cut costs or return to work later in life. I spoke to Rodney Horan, Managing Director at the aged care consultant Joseph Palmer & Sons, about these challenges. Where I work, uh, I straddle over two sectors. One is a financial planner investment advisor and the other is an aged care advisor. And I'm seeing it in our own client base and I'm seeing it across the board, really. People are retiring. Uh, the average age of retirement is 56. If people are living longer these days, which they are, the average length for a male is about 83 or so. That takes many, many years of funding. So they are retiring with inadequate savings. Yeah, I guess the question is, I mean, if you're living that long, how much money do you need in savings to fund the average Australian's retirement these days? Well, that's a very relevant point because what they're not doing is addressing that specific question. They're not sitting down and they're not doing a budget of what they'd like to achieve in their retirement years and what that could possibly cost on an annual basis and uh, therefore extrapolating that over you know, some life expectancy. So it, it does start in the beginning. And statistically, it starts all the way back to your late 30s, when the average age of a first home buyer is these days 37 years of age. And if you're taking on a typical 30 year loan, your chances are you'll go into your mid to late 60s with debt. So they're retiring with debt superannuation balances are low, often the debt is higher than those balances. And that's what's leading to what we see today is a perfect storm. Yeah, and due to that long life expectancy, are some Australians getting caught out and potentially being forced back into work later in life to pay the bills? Yes, we are seeing that. We are seeing people a few years into retirement realising they haven't tried retired with, with enough savings and they are looking to return to work which causes another issue. It's not get easy getting back into the workforce at a, at a later stage in life. And so the average superannuation savings for a male is about $420,000. It's about $380,000 for a female. So just on you know basic uh, dividend retir returns, invested 5%, your $420,000 is only going to generate about $21,000 per annum. And it's just not enough. And you don't know how much you can afford to eat into capital each year, because the one question none of us know is when's the last day we're going to take our last breath. So it is causing a problem. You know, just, just the, the general concept of retiring at 60 and living to 90, to fun, fund 30 years of living is quite, a, quite an exercise. You need a large capital to generate a return for you to live comfortably. OK, and then say you've been comfortably retired for 20 years or so, then suddenly around age 85, you might have a fall, need to move into a nursing home. I mean, how much can that then cost? And are people factoring those costs in as well? Well, we're clearly seeing that they're not. And you're absolutely right for raising that. I mean, the cost of aged care is not being funded in if they're doing a budget beforehand, many years beforehand. They're not addressing that issue. But if they get to that later stage in life and they do need care, well, a comfortable um, care facility to, to, to find a room, a comfortable room in a care facility may cost you up to a million dollars. Plus, it may cost you between eight and ten thousand dollars a month, 120 odd thousand a year. So we're finding they're retiring early, living longer. It's, it's the perfect storm. The returns haven't been great in previous years. They haven't correctly budgeted. They've possibly been the bank of mum and dad to their children. And they certainly hadn't adequately, adequately provided for their future aged care needs, which can be astronomical. We're actually seeing clients in their mid to late 70s run out of money. And it is frightening. From the 1st of July next year, the government is making some changes to aged care legislation. And I think the crux of it is wealthier Australians will pay more for aged care services. This seems pretty fair and it has bipartisanship support. I agree with you on that. It is fair. 
uh, those with means, I mean superannuation was originally set up not as a tax haven, or a tax or investment or wealth creation structure, it was to provide for your superannuation. It was bought in by Paul Keating, it was underpinned with a population in, even in, at that time noting how we would be ageing. No government either side of persuasion will be able to fund an ageing population of social security, so there was great incentives for you to fund your own retirement. The other aspect of that funding is to provide for your own care. If you're retiring with means over a certain threshold, one of the aged care expenses currently is a Commonwealth Government means tested fee. And basically it says if you've got means, the government's asking you to contribute, but not forever, up to a maximum of about $80,000. What they're doing with these proposed changes is extending that to $130,000 for those with means. And there's a few other expense uh, items as well that will be applicable for those who can afford it or not. And I agree with you. I think they're right and appropriate. I think, uh, you know, Australia's aged care population, we're expected to grow by about four times what we currently have uh, for those requiring aged care beds by 2040. We'll need to provide about 750,000 beds by that period over the next 20, 20 odd years and the number of Australians over 85 is set to triple in the next 40 years. So we need a vibrant aged care industry. We need aged care more than they need us. At the moment, over 50% of aged care providers are running at a loss. These proposed amendion, uh, amendments are aimed at allowing aged care providers to be incentivised to make a profit. Not all of them are in not-for-profit not businesses and to therefore to be able to roll out, expand and provide the further beds required for Australia's ageing population. Rodney Horan from Joseph Palmer and Sons, thanks for your time. Thank you very much.